newest thing gun gets my goat. <laughs> Chalupa for you. Chalupa for you. Hey folks, this is Rich Outfield. And I'm Big Anklevich. Welcome and back. Welcome yes. back. Let's finish to up our, our Green Lantern conversation. Yes. Where we left off. Let's do it. Go. Cool. All right. Ultimately, Green Lantern's not great. I, I, I don't think it was the worst. Yeah, it wasn't. The worst superhero film I've seen. There's many that were uh, worse, and we've named a few of them uh, in this conversation. I, I, I didn't mention Catwoman. Right. Catwoman was just yes. god-awful. Catwoman, Batman and Robin... You know, it was, it was maybe better than Batman Forever, too. Yeah, possibly. Uh, Batman Forever is a turd. I really didn't like that movie uh, either. But uh, it it had a couple moments that worked. And I don't know if Green Lantern did. But it, who knows? Maybe there's a, a director's cut out there that's going to make more sense. There's going to be a little bit better. And like we were talking about last time, there's an alternate universe where... <laughs> where they did it right. There's a whole trilogy. There's all five Green Lantern movies. And... Uh, Ryan Reynolds doesn't want to do it on the fourth one. And so they're like, okay, we're going to introduce Jon Stewart in this one. And that could have worked. Mm -hmm. It really could have. It'd be a very interesting if, – if you could keep them affordable and keep making them, there's no reason why they couldn't have had yeah. a, a franchise of those. I think that in this alternate universe, somehow Warner Brothers has to not own DC's uh, properties. I think that's what it t takes in the alternate universe for that to happen. Sigh. Yeah, I think that's really the problem is that uh, all those characters are controlled by one entity. And because of that, they're like, well, we'll use the most successful ones. But instead of like Marvel is where they have their characters and they go and they'll say, OK, let's we'll get Fox to do these. We'll get Paramount to do the this guy. We'll get somebody else to do this guy. And they manage to get many folks making their films. And that gives you a, a much better chance, it seems. But oh well. Luckily, I'm not so into any of their characters, so it doesn't bother me all that much that we do get to see them. Although I was saying at one point this year that I was most excited about the Green Lantern film just because it was a non-Superman or Batman DC film. And it was cool to be able to see a different character and get to know something else. And it turned out to be the least satisfying so far, which is unfortunate. That is too bad. And judging from that Captain America trailer that we watched, I think it will come in fourth place of the four superhero films. But I guess that still waits to yeah. be known for sure. Yeah, this is also something we've discussed. It, it, it's a trailer's job to put your best face forward and right. say... These are the best parts of this movie. Or if you like this, you're going to love this movie that's about to come out that we just made. And if they're doing their job, it's got to present something in an attractive package. So I'm surprised, really surprised, that there's so many relatable human beats in both of those Captain America trailers. Because those speak to me like... Like nothing does. I, I've seen at this age of my life so many explosions and so many right. CG robots and CG ships and planets. And seriously, I've seen more special effects than I've seen bare breasts in <laughs> movies. And it's just, yeah. You're not going to the right kind of movies, sir. Uh, <laughs> the things that I look for are emotion and, and something magical and something relatable. And when I see that in a trailer, it makes me think, oh, okay, well, this has something for me because I'm rapidly reaching that age where the studios no longer want me right. to come to their movies. And that's where my dad has been his whole life. <laughs> and like, there, there was this moment in the Super 8 trailer. You've seen it, right? The trailer? I think I have, but I don't really remember it well. It's been a while. There was this moment where the, the kid... A 12, 13-year-old kid has to do makeup on the girl that he really likes. And he, he sort of stutters and asks her if she wouldn't mind closing her eyes so he can put makeup on her. And his hand sort of touches her. And you see this magical, just split-second moment of, wow, you know, pretty girl. Mm -hmm. And that spoke volumes to me about what kind of movie this was. And I was like, ooh, I'm seeing that movie. Yeah, then there was just loads of CG in that trailer. Mostly about the friggin' train wreck, including one terrible shot that was so bad they didn't use it in the movie, but they used it in the trailer. But I remember what it was like. Hell, I'm still there. We're touching a pretty girl 
is some magical new experience. And seeing this kid have that for the very first time, I was like, oh, I want to see that. Trailers never do that kind of stuff. And I don't get it because how many 13-year-old boys are there that go to movies? That's who they want to go to their movies. You got to put something like that in every trailer. So 13-year-old's like, oh, hey, the, the boy's going to get to kiss the girl. or I mean, Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe in this age of the internet and porn and all that stuff, it's not enough. Just the, 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 the hand-holding wonder years innocence of adolescence. But here I am all these yeah, years later, and that still, still speaks to me. That's still like, wow, yeah. yeah oh. You mentioned wonder years, and I automatically think, oh, yeah, that was great stuff. Winnie Cooper. Yeah, I, I, I got to meet <laughs> Danica McKellar a few years ago. And what's weird is she didn't really blossom into some gorgeous mm-hmm. hot chick. She still looks like Winnie Cooper. Right. Of course, people recognize her all the time because she still looks the same. <laughs> right. But, but what's odd is Fred Savage still looks the same right. as well. He looks like a larger lumbering version of... Yeah. of... Kevin Arnold. Yeah. He uh, still looks a lot like Kevin every time you see him. The, the thing with her is kind of like Gary Coleman getting that, you know, what you talking about Willis thing. She gets told that all the time it's just like i had such a crush on you and 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 it's part of the the art with which that show was told is you were kevin arnold right and what he felt you felt and yeah it's weird i i worked on a a a movie with ali mills who played his mom and i asked her at one point if it would be okay if i called her mom and she said, you have no idea how often guys around your age ask me that. And I was like, oh, come <laughs> on. And she's like, no, no, people do all the time. And it was just like, really? That's so weird because I don't know. That just jumped in my head because I worked two days on it. And the second day I was familiar enough with her that I, I figured I could say this. And that for her to say that people say that all the time. But she was like Kevin's mom and Kevin was me. Right. And so she was like my mom. I don't know if you feel that way too, but just like the mom on the Wonder Years was my mom. <laughs> that show has remained timeless because of music rights. It's not been available like on video cassette or DVD and all that for years and years and years and years. I, I believe they finally sorted out the rights in like 2010. Yeah. So you can get it on DVD now. But for so long, it's just been in the back of my mind, a 20-year-old memory mm-hmm. of this perfect show making me nostalgic for a time period I wasn't even alive for. Yeah. And I'm chattering and chattering and chattering on, which is what we do on this show. That's what you paid your free for, ladies and gentlemen. That's right. That's what you paid your free 99 for. Oh, I like that. <laughs> That's cool. I, I, I don't know. I, I guess I could talk about movies forever. And, uh, you know, if you have a show and you would like to employ me, I would talk about movies forever. Yeah, we'll be back again next week talking more about movies, I'm sure. Oh, that's true. I I don't know how long this conversation has gone. Jeez. It's gone too long is the correct answer. (laughs) But we got Cars. We got Transformers 3. Oh, I'm sorry. You've got Transformers 3. You've agreed to jump on that particular grenade. (laughs) We've got Cowboys and Aliens. Yeah, that one I'd like to see too. We got Harry Potter. I'm excited about it. The last Harry Potter trailer. And yeah, that's another thing. It shows so much footage in that last Harry Potter trailer, including like people I think are spoilers, like a dead person on the ground being cradled by their mother. And you're just like, you really want to show that in the trailer? But then they also show like two characters touch each other's hands before they die. And I was like, wow, that is the potential for so much drama and and emotion, which was frankly absent from that book. No, the, no, the book was full of emotion or whatever, but that particular moment was not in the book. And it was a failed opportunity. Although, geez, I bawled through that whole damn thing. So maybe she was like, no, I'm going to leave this chapter out because that outfield guy already looks like a pussy. I, <laughs> so let him uh, have a little dignity. I, I guess we'll be talking about the Harry Potter thing. When you've had eight movies with the same characters, you, the emotional investment is going to be so yeah, it's strong. it's going to be really big. There really hasn't been such a thing before. 
you don't see the characters again and again even like james bond which has a gazillion sequels he's a different guy again and again it's oh this is james bond now oh okay and he's james bond for three or four. Oh, now we got a new james bond here and you're gonna love this guy he's the only character that returns almost every time so there's no investment to be made but yeah with harry potter i think that this is the same actors from beginning to end and uh, i think it's really going to be an interesting thing to see what's going to happen when you get to some of those scenes where uh... well okay I, I know we talked about this six months ago but the character of dobby people friggin' hated that guy <laughs> you know they they mocked him he was a stupid aspect of the harry potter movies or something it was heartbreaking when he it died was. and I guess I didn't really talk to people who were just like, oh, F Dobby, to see if they were moved. I would be surprised if somebody wasn't. Mm -hmm. But that was part and parcel of them taking their time to tell that final story. Yeah. And so it'll be interesting. It'll be interesting I, I mean, there, there's a character that's it's truly despised through all the books and all the movies. And when that character dies, it'll be fun to see how many people are just floored emotionally by that. It's not something I've really seen done before. I mean, you know, it's possible that kids cried in 83 when Darth Vader died. I don't know. I didn't. You know, a bad guy. Uh, it's so, something like that. We'll just, I, I, I really look forward to it. If it is done well, everything that you've ever known about this character will change and you, you will hopefully mourn. Yeah, it's, I guess we'll see. We'll see how it goes. And yeah, hopefully it's well done. It's probably it, already happened by the time we're yeah, by this the time out. this is finally airing. Well, that's fine. That's all good. It's a time capsule. Yeah. All right. So I guess we've talked ourselves out, and if we haven't, we need to say we did. Okay. Well, thank you for joining us again on our little voyage. That's right. Hope you enjoyed. That gets my goat. Good night. See ya. That Gets My Goat is produced under a Creative Commons 3.0 license for some reason. That's, you know, that might actually be a... You don't say. <laughs> <laughs>